Hey, so let's talk about above and below chords. This is like a simple idea. It's like a low resolution. It's not a strict musical concept. It's a general way to kind of maybe think about guitar that you can get your songs like sounding a little better or like have more fun playing covers. And let's just have a look at it really quickly. So we'll start with our A major bar chord up on our fifth fret. And we're only gonna play our top five strings. So we're gonna dodge our E down the bottom there. And we're gonna call this an above chord. Why? Well, our lowest note in the chord, our root note, we're playing that with our first finger, which means mechanically for the guitar, all of the notes that we build the rest of the chord with are kind of above it on the fretboard. And this makes kind of more sense if we think about this version of our A. Same strings, but now we're playing the root note with our fourth finger, our pinky. And the rest of the chord is kind of being built below our root note. Does that make sense? So it's kind of like above, below. You can kind of think that's our root note for our A's. Above, below. The chord is below, so it's a below chord. Now it's above, it's an above chord. Yeah, makes sense. All right, so that's above chords, that's below chords. That's the kind of general idea. What's happening here? What's the difference between these two chords? Like, I mean, they're both A's but there is sonic difference in them. And let's talk about that. I reckon the big difference is, is that above chords sound brighter and below chords will kind of sound dimmer and warmer and like more solid and uh, subtly focused. So you've kind of got a brightness to the above chords and a dimness to the below chords. And why is that? Well, I reckon there's two reasons. So let's have a look at those. For starters, it's kind of obvious. In our above chords, because again, the nature of the instrument and how the notes kind of get higher as we go that way and that way, we have a bigger note range inside this. So the overarching interval, the entire span of the chord is gonna be larger almost always in above chords than it will be in below chords. So if we have a look at our below chord here, we'll notice that our lowest, lowest note is our root here and our highest note in the chord up on our B string, that's a third, but it's in the octave above. So we call that a 10th. We have a span of a 10th inside that chord. When we go to the above chord, same root. Now our highest note is up there on the E, but it's a, so that's a fifth, but it's in the octave above. So we're gonna call that a 12th. So now we have a chord span of a 12th, 10th, 12th. I mean, if we were going to do it on the D chord, so we're doing like a D power here, like our D major shape here. There's our below, there's our above. And the same deal, this is spanning a 10th and that's only spanning an octave. So again, same rings true. So it's a large interval between the lowest part of the chord and the highest part of the chord. And I think that's part of the reason why above chords will sound brighter. But I think there's another reason as well. And it's about the internal intervals of the chord. So if we go back and have a look at this one, our above A. Our first interval down the bottom here in the bass area, we've got a perfect fifth. And then our next interval inside there is our E to our A, which is a four. So we've got a perfect four. When we go to our below chord though, we have a look at our first two intervals. We've got a major third, and then we've got a minor third. So in our below chord, our first three notes span a fifth, and in our above chord, they span an octave. So just like the above chord is kind of more open in its extremes as the below chord, it's also more open in the lower parts of the chord. And the effect of that as well is that when we have our fifths and our fourths making up our lower intervals, we kind of don't get as much rub between those notes as opposed to if we do it like this. And the interplay between those lower notes when we're dealing with thirds has a lot more of a rub towards it all these little like artifacts and articulations in between the sounds comparatively to when we have our fifths and our fourths in like our bass area of our chord. So they're the two reasons that I reckon why we've got our above chords and our below chords and why the above ones sound brighter than the below ones, they sound dimmer. The reasons is the extreme intervals of the chord, like the entire intervals of the lowest notes at the bottom, as well as the internal intervals of the chord. Brighter, dimmer. 
why does this matter or how can we use these? Well, they're good in um, the sense that they help move arrangements from one section to the next really well. So if we're in a verse and we're wanting to go into a chorus and that chorus is like larger and bigger and more dynamic and higher energy than our verse, which it often is, we can kind of maybe use a bright chord towards the end or a dim chord, then a bright chord to kind of help expand that verse into the chorus. Or inversely, if we're in a chorus, at the end of the chorus, we can start maybe using some dimmer voicings that can help bring us back down into our second verse or bridge or I don't know, whatever. But yeah, it kind of just spice up your playing a bit. I mean, it just gives you another thing to play with. Give you more dynamic in your music. Give you more dynamic in your playing, you know? Same chord, different ways to play it. Goes hard. And yeah, if you're doing it with arpeggios, that also, same deal. And you can go further with this idea of like just resolutions in general. Like if you want them to sound bright and brilliant and epic, then use like a bigger chord span. And if you want them to like kind of come together and conclude like, and then come into like a zoom out feel or something, you know. Like, you know, big. feel that difference and same chords and the difference and what you're thinking about there is interval span. Yeah, so that's about it. Low resolution, simple idea. Anyway, yeah, a bit of a rant. Cool. If you got anything out of it, yeah, kick us a like. And um, if you want to see more obscure guitar concept stuff, then yeah, subscribe because I'm going to be making a bunch of those. Otherwise, take it easy. Mm -hmm.